This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So Tevin Campbell had a conversation on the People Every Day podcast. And for the first time ever, he has come out. Here's what he had to say. The girls tweeted something like, I had a talking to my mom and she told me that so-and-so and so-and-so and Tevin Campbell were gay. Mm-hmm. Help me. And I was like, well, Tevin is and put the rainbow emoji. Yeah. But it was just a casual thing to me. I don't care what people that I don't know or I will never meet. I love my fans. But what they think about me and my sexuality has no is of no importance to me. Yeah. Like, you support me, that's cool. When we can get to the place in society, especially black folks, where somebody can just say, you know, yeah, I'm gay. Like, every person in the world isn't straight. Get over it. When you get to a point in your life where you love yourself so much and you don't give a damn what people think or say about you, that feels so good. And hopefully you can inspire other people to do that. I had no idea he wasn't out already. I mean, I never sat around <laughs> and thought about Tevin, Tevin Campbell's sexuality, but I thought folks already knew that. And I, and, I, and I promise you, good for him, but Can We Talk is a forever classic bop, and I don't care who he was trying to talk to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, he did say it was it's difficult, you know, and... Asked about um, Frank Ocean and Little Nas X, like he said, in the it music wasn't like industry, that. when you in the music industry, when you see the Frank Oceans and the Little Nas X's, you know, just sharing that part of themselves with fans, what, what goes through your mind? I hate that it wasn't like that in the '90s, but I'm glad that I get to see that. I wouldn't have been prepared when I was a kid to be a spokesperson of the LGBTQ plus community, but I'm glad that. It's changing, you know, yeah. because there are a lot of kids, especially young black boys, that need to see representation. Yeah. Yeah. Because the machismo thing exists in our culture, too. And it's poison. There are kids as young as five years old that have committed suicide. Well, mm-hmm. good for Tevin Campbell, man. I mean, he, if mm-hmm. he wants us to know, cool, but it's, you know, it's, it's not our business. It's nobody's business, you know, what your sexuality is. If you want to share, share. Yeah, I guess he felt like, like he said, there's kids as young as five years old who committed suicide. So if he can be a role model and feel comfortable yep. enough to share that, then I think that's great. Yeah, I feel, I feel people should share if they want to, but I, I think they should because, like he said, there's so many people dealing with so many different problems, so many different things, so many different things that they don't know if they could do it on their own. So the fact that somebody that they see, a celebrity, a, a singer, is going through the same thing kind of makes them feel a little better because now it's understandable, you know? Right, and I couldn't understand why people have an issue with representation on TV because we all know how much representation matters. And so when you can see something that does really exist in the world on television and it represents who you are, that is important. I still don't want to see it on TV, but I don't want to see nothing on TV. I don't want to talk to my kids what? about sex. Yeah, I'm talking about when it comes to kids, kids things and cartoons. <laughs> what? I don't want to see. I don't want to talk any of it on t- television. No, I'm, I'm serious. I don't want to. I don't want to because right now what they're no doing even with my kids TV cartoons. You don't yeah, see just no sex, sex in general. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to see any type of talk well, about I sex mean, on television when it comes to cartoons and kids. And that's why I have my six oh, kids. Okay, well, you're talking about cartoons, but I'm saying as adults. Or the kids shows. Or kids shows. Adult shows, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about kids shows. But most of those shows, um, they do have, uh, they do have like, what, ratings for, for young kids. And they tell you, like, before the show comes on, they'll tell you what kind of what's going to be on there, like nudity, cursing, you know. Sometimes. Stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes. But sometimes I'll catch, you know, my kids watching something that I think so on one of the child, the cartoon networks or children networks, and it, it, they'll South be Park. just talking about sex or something like that. <laughs> no, not South Park. But something like that. And, I, and I, I think it's sometimes it's too early. I see what you're saying. That's just me as a, as a parent. And I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there that. Whoa. Okay. Well, I think we lost Charlamagne. No, All right. Well, Chris me? Brown. It... Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. What you say? You said you think oh, there's no, some said, parents. I said, I said, I said, I said I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there that, that agree. Like, you know, you got to monitor what your, what your kids watch. And some th- some things kids are too young for. I don't. I, mm-hmm. I I agree with you in a lot of ways. A lot of sex on television for like young young kids, especially on just yep. like regular TV, they can access. That's wild. I think so. And you got to watch them YouTube settings too. YouTube is the worst because YouTube goes wild. Sometimes they they be cursing and yelling. I'll be like, "What are you watching?" And they'll be like, "This is explaining Roblox." I'm like, "Nah, cut that." Yep. Off. You think that what you saw on television as a kid affected you? Like if you saw yes. things. Yes. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Right. Absolutely. 
Hell yes. Absolutely. And I, I tell everybody, this is, this is gonna sound stupid, but the reason I wanted to go to Hampton University was because of a different world. Like when I seen that experience, I was like, I want that experience going to college. Yeah. Yeah, we all know we know the media uh, influences people, whether it's the, the music, whether it's the visuals. Of course, it influences people. Yes, it influenced us growing up. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, Chris Brown is talking about his meet and greets, and he says that he is happy to have inspired artists to actually give a F about their fans. He wrote that on his Instagram story. He said, I didn't invent the wheel or meet and greets, but I damn sure set the tone. Team Breezy. It is actually really funny to see all of these uh, meet and greet pictures that people are having. One woman posted a picture of herself naked, like going to the I Chris Brown it. meet and greet. <laughs> uh, no, I love it. I mean, I think it's mm-hmm. a way that you can get interactive with your fans and it's something that your fans will never forget. I think I seen Megan doing some of it, but I love it. I think that's pretty dope. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee and that is your rumor report. All right. We got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes, U.S. home sales, the housing market has uh, come down from how ridiculously high it was uh, earlier this year. And we'll tell you what the silver lining is in that. All right, we'll get into all that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.